Fonny Willis disqualification case is over. It's a wrap. Scott McAfee, the judge, decided in his ruling that though there was an appearance of impropriety, there was not enough to disqualify her. There was no obvious sign of corruption. There was no corruption that they pointed to that could get her pushed off the case. And since there was an impropriety that was necessary for either Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade to step aside or for Fonnie Willis, District Attorney of Fulton County, to step aside. And of course, they chose the former. So Nathan Wade steps aside. Fonnie Willis can continue the case against Donald Trump and all is right with the world. Or is it? It seems to me a lot of us don't understand what the purpose of the case was. It was to determine if Fonnie Willis had a conflict of interest. And that's not what the judge found. The judge did not find that. They found that there was an appearance of impropriety. It looks kind of bad. But no conflict of interest. And that's what the case was about. And that's why she's still the lead prosecutor for the case. Does that make it right? No, it doesn't make it right. It makes it extremely dirty and messy and funky. And then it further exposes all of the impropriety that's going on in media. It further exposes how just how it's all about blue shirt, red shirt, blue shirt, red shirt, orange man bad, Biden saint, save the world, save the whales. And what it should be about the rule of law. Nathan Wade may tender his resignation, but that doesn't change the stain that's on this case. There's all these comparisons to other judges, and that has absolutely nothing to do with this case. I hear you, but I don't hear you. One corruption case at a time. Looking into Fonnie Willis's relationships. Suspect. Willis hiring her boyfriend to work on a type of a case he's never worked on before. With such a high-profile case, trying of a president. That's also suspect, yo. The special prosecutor, the boyfriend, Nathan Wade, lying under, no, under oath, denying that he had a relationship with her in the beginning. Suspect. The ruling by Judge McAfee, also suspect. No, there's no impropriety. It just serves an appearance of impropriety, but we haven't proven that there was actual impropriety. Suspect. No, we don't see that you shit your pants, but we smell it. The fact that Judge McAfee is a Republican running in a blue district with this weird ruling is also suspect. Suspect, suspect, suspect. A lot of suspects. The usual suspects. And all of this is a big fucking distraction from the actual case of Donald Trump. Did he conspire to overturn an election in Georgia? Yay or nay? That's what we're supposed to be here for. And it's so obvious that the shoe was on the other foot and it was Joe Biden and it was a RICO case against him and he, the lead prosecutor of the district attorney just so happened to lie under oath about a relationship with a, a lover who they gave all this money to. Uh, everyone that you've been hearing would have been on the opposite side of the argument. We know it. Because it's politics. And they're all suspect. All this talking all week from a bunch of liars with false narratives, spinning, looking to keep their jobs or maintain their positions or please their base or get some clicks, some views or whatever the hell they're trying to do, write a book or whatever it is. The Fonny Willis supporters going after MAGA Trumpet supporters, it's all very tiring. And at the end of the day, if you're not a part of the Democrat versus Republican circus, all you can do is sit back, scratch your head and yell like the guy from the Jetsons. Jane, stop this crazy thing! Before your time, <laughs> you know, this would be hilarious if it wasn't so sad. If you're like me and you're neither Republican or Democrat, I feel you. And I feel for you. We're surrounded on all sides by people whose livelihoods depend on the allegiance to Donald Trump or the allegiance to going after Donald Trump. Bad man, orange. Orange man, bad. It's pathetic to see them all be so obviously in the tank for one side or the other. You know, this reminds me of a quote by David Hume. It was a prominent Scottish philosopher and historian, and it says, The corruption of the best of things gives rise to the worst. So anyway, the case continues. You know, when America finally crashes and burns, and it will, it'll be this damn two-party system complete with gangsters, hitmen, and flunkies that lit the match. The best we can hope for is to find a well-insulated room with thick walls, maybe even a bomb shelter. 
get in it and lock the door.